Hello everybody, my name is Carol Brown, I am an urban fantasy author, and I am here today to get drunk and talk about a book. I know I was supposed to actually kind of like do a video about my, my writing process uh, today, but the whole reason I ended up not doing that is because it was finals week at college and a lot of my writing process was mostly focused on finishing my final projects and that just didn't work out. And since the last drunk book review file I did got corrupted and I didn't redo it because it kind of loses the spark if you have to redo it like that, I just decided that I would do a drunk book review on a different book that I finished recently because, because it's easier. So. Actually, since we are talking about BDSM, I thought it would be appropriate to have Saki for this one um, because, well, reasons. So if you are new and you've never seen me actually do a drunk book review before, what happens is I talk about the non-spoiler section in the beginning because I'm not drunk yet so I can coherently say all that and then when I get to the spoiler section, which usually involves me ranting about something involving the book, um, that's kind of where I get more inebriated and I'm pretty clear about telling you when that's going to be. Um, now, I am reviewing a BDSM romance, and that obviously means that this video is not for children. In fact, if you're under the age of 18, I would really appreciate it if you would just leave this video, because the last thing I need is your parents and YouTube coming after me, so just help me help you. Or rather, help me help myself, however you want to say that. Normally, for books like this, writing wife comes in and she does the reviews with me, which I think are hilarious, um, but BDSM is not her jam, she's not interested, so I'm just doing the solo today. Could you not? Dogs, man, dogs. Oh god. Alright, um, so I have a lot of notes about this book and I had to put them on the side here, so if you see me looking over here, it's me referring to my notes. So the book that we are talking about today is The Submissive by Tara Sumi. And I I have a lot of thoughts about this book for a ver variety of reasons. Some of it has to do with the storytelling, some of it has to do with the actual BDSM elements in it, and I'm gonna kind of try and dive into that as we go. But for the synopsis of this story, we follow Ab Abigail King as she becomes the submissive for Nathan, who is a rich CEO of some industry company that I'm not quite sure does what, but he's a CEO and he makes lots of money, that's all we need to know, right? So she goes through like this application process to become a sub, kind of applies for it, gets the job, and then we kind of follow her development with her relationship with Nathan as she becomes his submissive and what that looks like. Um, I kind of appreciate the way that it's set up because um, in the story what happens is she mostly has time to herself throughout the week, but like Friday through Sunday, you know, she's over at his place and they're doing the kinky over there, which um, is really nice to see because a lot of books in this genre usually just kind of do like the 24 7 thing and that's not really healthy especially if you're new to everything but anyway moving on um my impression of this book is that it's a lot like other bdsm <laughs> romance genres where you've got the rich person and the the submissive from a humble background and it's all about that sexy power dynamic right i guess that's what it is um i'm just kind of over the trope of the rich be you know the rich dom dommy having the final say on everything that the sub does it's really it's really overdone for me having even saying that like this book is actually i want to say 90 percent better than a lot of the other books that i find out there in fact um like i was still engaged with this book i did read it you know when i couldn't sleep at night like i was reading it and i was engaged with it i you know was asking myself good questions like oh man what are they going to do now how's this going to work out you know all that fun stuff and um, one of the things I do want to highlight is that Nathan, for all of the things that I'm going to gripe about later, actually proceeds with this relationship very responsibly. Uh, he knows that Abby is new to everything that he likes to do and he's walking her through it carefully. A lot of the stuff is honestly pretty vanilla um, in terms of like how extreme that it gets, which is a really nice change to see because with BDSM books, a lot of them are just about shock value and about making the audience go, oh, and a lot of that stuff that's done is not actually healthy. So seeing Nathan actually be responsible and walk her through things and take time and, you know, also reassure her because there are times in the story where she is just like literally freaking out and he does what he can to like make her feel precious and valued and I think that's really good. One of the things that I did actually appreciate, um, because like in a lot of stories, the sub is usually like the, the meek person who does, who's shy and doesn't say much, but in the story we actually do see Abby as she becomes more comfortable with how she can interact with Nathan, become like a little bit more confident. There's like one part where she like just takes the reins and I'm like, mm, well done. You know, true story, I didn't like sake in Japan and I'm still not fond of it now, but like I said, it's just appropriate to just drink it when you talk about BDSM because it's kind of interesting that when Western society decides to do something, the Japanese take it and they just make it better. Come by. So, I said nice things about Nathan, um, and 
Again, when it came to the way that the relationship worked, I thought that that was pretty well done and that was a lot healthier than what I usually see in BDSM romance novels. But at the same time, Nathan is a little over the top for me. Um, and it's not anything that Nathan does, it's basically what happens around him. So he's got his family and his family is always like kind of like talking about like all these nice things that Nathan does. So he donated uh, bone marrow, he like saved somebody's house from foreclosure, like you just constantly hear Nathan's family talk about how amazing it is and talking about Nathan's family, oh my god. If I hear one more family member of relation to Nathan talking about how Abby has changed him for the better, I'm gonna puke because that was like, like that was seen like to be the only reason that they existed outside of giving exposition about Nathan's background at one point, was just be like, yeah, you're doing great things, it's amazing, like he's just so much better. And I'm like, I did not see this betterness, I did not see any change from Abby's point of view. I would have really liked to have seen the way he was before and then watch him transform into that better self rather than just constantly being bombarded with information like he's so much better you've changed him he's so much better uh, uh, uh. like I'm, I'm done and still but piggybacking off of abby a little bit there okay so like uh okay so i have thoughts um but i don't want to dive into them right now because i don't want it to be a major spoiler but at one point jim you know abby abby starts going to the gym right she starts going to the gym she's working out um, she's doing this like three or four times a week plus yoga and some other shit um, and like after some events happen she talks about her new body and I'm kind of like I never really saw what your body was before and I didn't see the transformation so when the the line of I appreciate my new body came out I was just like where what and I guess maybe that's just me as a gym rat if you didn't know I'm a gym rat I go to the gym like four times a week and I weight lift and I do all sorts of things and I know that a body transformation takes takes time unless you're under like a really rigorous diet which she's not so she would have had to have gone to the gym for three months at a minimum to see any kind of transformation and even then there's going I as, like I said, as somebody who's gone through this process where you work out and you train and everything else like that, there's going to be side effects. Like, for example, like, let's say that Nathan said she can't have as many carbs. That didn't happen. But there's going to be cravings that she's going to have. Like, she's going to wish that she could have the things that she's told that she can't have. And that's not really visited. She's just told that she could go to the gym and to eat healthy. Like, anyway, I just, I think, and it's not something that I think needs to have, like, a huge emphasis on. I would have just appreciated to kind of see um kind of like her struggles with doing that and I think that would have been a really good thing to kind of dive into while she's at the gym and she's working out and she's always like I have to do this because you know it's in it's on the submissive and I said I was going to do this and all this other stuff like because then it would kind of show like how the dynamic of this lifestyle is kind of like spreading out into other things and again I'm going to talk about that just in the spoiler section because I have some rants about the BDSM romance genre um but yeah, I just, I think I would have liked that to be dived into just a little bit. Like, not in huge, enormous detail, but it would have just been nice to, you know, kind of pick up on, like, her food cravings and when she was sore and just all that stuff. Again, I have gripes about the book, but it's still in the top 10 of BDSM romances that I would recommend to other people. It's, it's not, while it's not realistic, it's a good story and it is healthy and it does have a happy ever after at the end. So if that's something that you're looking for, bim bam boom, it's right there for you. Now, we're going to go ahead and move in the spoiler section. You don't want spoilers. You're done. Bye. It was nice seeing you. Please like and subscribe my video. I appreciate you. Bye. This stuff is so nasty. Is there a sake that does not taste like black licorice out there? If there is, let me know, please, because this is, I can't, but I'm going to. Oh, probably help if I didn't chug it. My gripe with this book is kind of overlapping on my gripe with the genre overall and this is coming from somebody who is very knowledgeable about the scene and that's as far into that as i'm gonna get i'm very knowledgeable about this i know how it works i'm pretty educated uh the only thing i don't know is sometimes about the best way to write it that's that's pretty much where my thing is but bdsm genre books have the exact same goddamn template where it's always some rich person who is all seeing and all knowing and this tiny little submissive person they're just so small and they're just so intimidated by their dom and I'm just like I'm over it stop that's not how this works a dom is not always going to be some rich CEO of a company they could be a stranger that you bump into on the street they could be a teacher they could be really anybody and this the stereotype of it's always got to be a rich person that's in control of their life just drives me nuts and I'm just I really really like it to kind of branch out from that into what it realistically is because unfortunately a lot of the books that come out 
involving romance and BDSM are not healthy. Like, they're really not healthy at all. And it, what it really does is it, it, it puts a stigma on the community, it puts judgment, like, Fifty Shades of Grey, I'm not gonna lie, caused a lot of harm for the people in the scene because it showcased a lot of very unhealthy, very bad red flags but made them romantic and I'm like, if you guys want me to actually like review that book, let me know. Even though I have not read it in years, it's still burned into my psyche because I screamed just that much. So comment down below if you want me to like rant and, and scream about that book because I got oh, so much things to say about it. Trying to go back to what I was saying. Doms are not always going to be rich, they're not always going to be in charge of their companies, they're not going to always have personalized rooms for their fun times, and they're not going to have constant expensive shit to put on their submissives. So Abby, like, in the story, basically gets a choker made out of diamonds, and I'm like, I can't even, like, afford regular stuff, and this guy's just throwing diamonds at her. Um, he's got toys, he's got a personalized dream, Mofo got a mansion, okay, and a piano that he plays at night, and a whole bunch of other stuff, like... And I just, I'm really tired of that, um, but that's not, probably not my biggest issue that I constantly see in Romance BDSM that I saw in this. The big thing that I saw was actually stalking. It just, it's like a universal truth that if an author is going to write about BDSM, at some point the dom or dommy is going to stalk their submissive, and that is not sexy. It is not sexy at all. Please stop doing that. It's so bad. I picked up on three situations in which Nathan was actually stalking Abby and the first one that was a major red flag for me was when he knew that she did not get eight hours of sleep. So let me, okay I gotta backtrack. So there is a contract that they sign about what things are going to be done. This includes the yes no maybe list, this includes things that he expects her to do and she signs this willingly. Like there's no negotiation on it. Like I think the most that she says is that, um, you know, that she's not very athletic, but, you know, it's something that develops over time. And one of the big things that I saw in the beginning that I was just like, wah, 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 um, was the use of the safe word. So the way that Nathan implemented the safe word was, was not, I need to stop or this is too much for me. It was a, you say this word and the entire relationship ends. That was a huge red flag for me. But that was actually addressed in the end because he knew what he was doing. So thank you, author, for doing that. I really do appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so there's a contract and she signs it, which controls her diet and what she's eating, how often she's going to the gym. And it also talks about the number of hours of sleep that she's supposed to get at night, which is eight. So there's like one weekend where Abby comes back and Abby only gets like seven and not eight hours, right? And so she shows up the following weekend and he knows right like how are you going to know she doesn't have a fitbit you're not tracking her sleeping cycle so how are you going to know that she did not get eight hours of sleep on sunday night unless you fucking creeping on her hell to the no on that bullshit it's not romantic it's not sexy it's not cool if you have yourself if you find yourself in a situation in that kind of bdsm situation and you figure out that your dom or dommy is stalking you walk the fuck away because there is something else going on that you should not be part of and the reason I'm saying that is I said there are three instances, right? There are three times that I picked up that Nathan was stalking her and it was so uncomfortable and very creepy because even in the, even in this lifestyle, there are still boundaries. There is still space and all this other stuff. But what made it worse is Mofo had not been stalking her since she signed up to be his sub. He had been stalking this bitch for seven years. Seven. Think just... Think about that for just a moment. Seven fucking years he'd been stalking this bitch. The only saving grace in all of that is that in the second half of the book, Nathan talks about how he's seeing a psychologist and he's getting help. So thank fucking God that that's happening. Because even though he's really going there because of the trauma that he experienced at losing his family members um, in a car accident, I know if it's a really good psychologist, they're going to pick up on this other shit and they're going to address it. If not, oh well. Um, but at least that's getting seen too, which I really do appreciate. But yeah, stalking ain't cool, y'all. Don't, like, just no. Big no. I have another gripe about Nathan because I don't like Nathan. <laughs> Um, even though Nathan is far, and in comparison to other examples of like people who live in this lifestyle or are in that position, he's well done. I want you to keep that in mind. He's better done than a lot of other love interests that I've seen and that makes me cringe a lot when I really think about it. So I don't want to completely ruin the story but they're, they're obviously for something like this at one point the two people need to walk away from each other and that ends up happening. 
And the way that this goes down, and the way that it goes down to that point, I thought was really well done. I was like, oh damn, that's hot, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, and Abby takes her shit and she gets in the car and she leaves and I'm like, yes, queen, good job, good job. Um, and at, due to circumstances I don't want to dive into, which involve Abby's bitchy friend who I really don't like, like, the like, I get that you have friends that are like hard ass and truthful with you, but I hate Abby's friend. Like every time she comes into the scene, she's just a capital C to me and I could do without her, but that's just me. Her friend is getting married and at this engagement party, she happens to run into Nathan and you know, that's really lukewarm scene for me. Like I was expecting a lot more from that, but it was just like, bleh. Um, and as Abby is leaving, Nathan grabs the microphone at this fucking party and he's like, please Abby, don't leave me. I need you, don't leave me. And I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. All respect for Nathan lost in that goddamn moment when he made a spectacle of himself at somebody else's engagement party. Like there is so many, oh my God, like it's insensitive. It's making an idiot of yourself. And like, there are so many other ways. Mofo has Abby's number. He could just call her. And maybe, maybe that's just a knee-jerk reaction that I have because I've gone to engagement parties where like somebody else proposes or whether, whatever and they end up stealing the thunder of the couple that's there and I always think that that's really rude and sensitive and don't do it. And if you're at somebody's wedding and you decide to propose to your girlfriend while you're there, don't. Just don't. Okay. So anyway, um, lost all respect for Nathan in that moment because it was just like, and it's not just me because like I have friends who were in that lifestyle and I was like, hey, hypothetical, I'm just going to read this passage to you. Tell me what you think. And they were like, I don't know who that is, but that's definitely like not what a person in that mentality would do. And I think, you know, kind of reflecting back on it right now in my slightly inebriated state is that the author was trying to showcase that Nathan was vulnerable and how much that he cared and needed Abby, but there are just so many other ways to do it than making a scene at somebody else's engagement party. And I, uh, this is upsetting enough that I need another drink because I just can't, I just can't with that shit. So it's just because that's not how healthy people would, would do that. And maybe part of it now again I'm looking back at it maybe that was just showing that he wasn't healthy that he needed help that he was just in a he was in a dark place without a lamp um but there are just so many other different ways than airing out your laundry in front of just a huge group of people and speaking of a huge group of people I was so like like poor Nathan in some situations his entire family was kind of ganging up on him a little bit because they knew that there was some friction going on between them and they wanted to make him fight for her and I was just like like maybe maybe that's just a family thing because in my family if one of like if my cousin is having a fight with their spouse I'm just gonna fuck off and I'm gonna go do something else I'm gonna go play Zelda and I'm gonna let them figure that shit out because it's really not my place to make any of them fight for each other like no, stuff puts hair on your chest. Oh my god. Now that I think about it, there's an action. There's another creepy element that I really didn't realize until I thought about it just now, where Nathan's family is actually tied into a lot. Abby's like environment, like his aunt is actually in charge of the hotel that she ends up going to. There's a car accident that she's involved in, and her aunt runs the place. And, you know, Nathan obviously, like, forks the bell on that and a whole bunch of other stuff. And we don't really hear anything else about the car accident other than it happened because... I mean, I haven't been in a car accident, but I have relatives that have, and usually that's shit that gets drawn out for like six months because you have to go to court, you have to sue, you have to figure out who's liable, you've got insurance problems and all this other stuff. And granted, it's Abby in a cab, but I would imagine that she would still have to do some kind of testimony, even if there's like an army of lawyers there to like speak in her defense. But yeah, um, Nathan's family is like really involved in Abby's life and they are really pr predominant in her environment. And that... That actually, shit, that makes me uncomfortable, like fuck. Just think about it for a minute. Let's just say that Abby and Nathan break up for, you know, reasons that are Abby's fault. Like Abby maybe becomes like a cheating bitch or something, right? Um, but now you live in a city where Nathan's family is surrounded by his very powerful relatives. Like what happens if you break your leg and go to the hospital that the aunt's at and now you find yourself not getting care because the aunt doesn't like you. The, like there's so much, there's so many levels of conflict of interest now that I'm sitting here and I'm like, Nathan makes a spectacle of himself at this engagement party. No no respect, like none. Um, he goes and he gets help, thank God. Um, and then he and Abby actually start to kind of like have a, a 
a, a typical romantic relationship like they go to the movies they do regular stuff you know it's not all like kind of scene oriented and that's good I'm super happy with that like I'm really happy that the author did that because like that kind of lifestyle is more of like an additional flavor but it's not the basis that a relationship should be made on Keep in mind that when you're working with this kind of lifestyle, honesty and being very truthful are kind of like the foundation for this to work. Like if there's lies or deception or anything, it all falls apart, which we kind of see in the story. Again, I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so, but it's it's the foundation, but it, again, you gotta have, you gotta have some typical relationship stuff in there to help normalize it or it gets really abstract real quick. Now, they do this, it makes me happy. They date, they go movies, they do regular stuff, and then at one point, you know, they go ahead and they revisit the contract and they reword it a little bit about what's going to happen, what's not going to happen, because they both like having this lifestyle and they both like the dynamic that it brings, and that's fine, that's cool, I appreciate that. I also, I really like the way that the beginning and the end chapter, while they are similar, they're also contrast from each other. Because in the end chapter, you can see the level of confidence that Abby's gotten since the beginning chapter, and I thought that that was really good. Um, and it was just a really nice way to wrap it up. And that book could have been a stand on by itself, but it's not. Because there's another book from his point of view. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to read that or not. Because knowing what happened in the first book, I'm like, oh, god damn it. At the same time, I think I am going to read it because I did read the sample chapter. And I think it is really important for people to actually see kind of how this relationship works from the other side of things um and you know n nobody wants me to talk about this there is a lot of insecurity and uncertainty from the other side of that kind of relationship dynamic and I think it is a good thing to actually see that that happens now whether you see it with the person that you might be doing this with that's different but I I just think it's healthy and I think it's an okay thing to explore and to define and just show people that not everybody who does this is like a really like super controlling asshole with like issues. Either way, good book, mostly. Except I know I griped a lot about that, but again, a lot of the gripes that I have about stuff like this is just being applied to the genre overall. I think it's a bad representation about how that community actually functions and it's really just done for like somebody's like personal fetish fantasy about how they would like things to happen to them. And true story, drunk opinion, take it how you want. Um, now, with that said, uh, I would still recommend this book. I, I know I just grabbed a lot about it, but if you take into account, I said this is the top 10 of the books that I would recommend, I just want you to consider that usually the other 95% of these books in this genre are really bad and not very well done and just, uh, it's a good starting point. I would probably start with this book and then move on to another one. Um, and the writing is actually really d well done. Like the, the deep POV that I usually see in this book was um, artistically done and I never really broke except for the one time with like the, the new body comment that I mentioned earlier in the video. And it was, and again, like for me, for some, again, I'm in the scene so I understand it, but I think for somebody else who's not reading this, they would probably enjoy it and they would enjoy Nathan's vulnerability and all the other stuff. So again, highly recommend this book. You should probably read it. Give this person some money so that way they can maybe write more books and, you know, write more books. Alright, that's it. That's all I've got. I have drank five shots of the sake stuff. Um, I can't feel my nose right now, but what I would like to reiterate is that if you would like me to do a review of the 50 book, I will. Um, and that's probably going to turn into more of an educational video because that book is full of nothing but red flags that usually like submissives can see and know to walk from. So if you want me to do that, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to. Um, if not, uh, if you would like to recommend a book in this genre that is actually not horribly done with a constant rich CEO dom dommy then please let me know that too because i would actually like to read that i would like a change of pace because i tried to look for them the other day and there's just really nothing there and i'm like why why is this a thing like i need i need real shit over here and at this point i'm just gonna have to write it myself because that's literally what i'm doing right now with that ramble over uh i'm gonna go ahead and end the video thank you so much for coming thank you so much for listening to me ramble on about a book that you may or may not read if you do read it let me know i'm curious about your thoughts and your opinions on that 
Uh, as you can tell, uh, I have a channel here on YouTube where I talk and whine about the life of the writer, sometimes under the influence of wine or sake in this case. And if you are looking for some kind of educational video, please let me know what you would like to get educated on. I'm more than happy to provide content for you to help you be a better writer. I got a newsletter if you are not quite sure of my qualifications. By signing up for that newsletter, you get a short story. You can read it, you can peruse it, see if I know what I'm talking about. If not, you can unsubscribe. I totally understand. No hurt feelings. It will just forever remain in the unsubscribe column of my newsletter forever. Anyway, thank you so much for coming. I really would like to hear your thoughts and opinions on this book, any other book. Feel free to send me some reads. I need some good reads for the next three weeks because like I said, college is over and I'm going to be reading smut and writing smut and smut, 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 smut. But thank you so much for coming again and I'm going to talk to you all again real soon.